So I have to say that I've been following the uh, coronavirus since uh, last November. Um, I was teaching a course on the history of medicine um, in the fall, and I uh, was reading news reports um, from China that uh, people were getting really sick, and they thought it was the spread of a pneumonic form of plague. And I shared this with students and and said to them that, you know, plague, even though um, we know the largest pandemic uh, broke out in the 14th century in the Middle Ages, um, bubonic plague is still endemic in many parts of the world, and China is one of those areas. Um, and this was really concerning to me that it was a pneumonic form of plague, um, because we know that the pneumonic form is the most deadliest. Anyway, flash forward to mid-January, and uh, they have figure out that it's not a, a, a kind of bacterial infection, but in fact a virus that spreads, spreads really rapidly. So I think um, one of the interesting things about looking at uh, what's happening now is, is thinking uh, of pandemics as historical forces that bring about a great deal of change. And if we look at the 14th century, um, and the Black Death and its impact on European society, um, we see that it brought, back, it brought about a considerable amount of change and in fact, it really revamped the healthcare system. Um, the whole trend that we see after the plague is the centralization of healthcare under uh, the authority of town governments or uh, higher authorities uh, of the state, for example, and the foundation of uh, general hospitals, um, the hiring of doctors, surgeons, midwives, and even pharmacists and affiliating those medical professionals with hospitals because really up until that point, hospitals were places you went to to go to to, to be looked after just uh, to some extent, but most people died in these hospitals. So uh, looking at pandemics historically and looking at their impact on society, on culture, on medicine, um, healthcare, um, just on cultural outlook is really important to do.